Now today, for this sort of sewing and fabric experiment, we're actually going to transport to the kitchen. Ta -da! <laughs> and here right in front of me, I have a few things that you might be used to seeing in your kitchen as food waste. So I have onion skins, I have here avocado pits and skins as well. And of course we have some fabric with which we're going to be experimenting today. I have white cotton, two pieces, and then I also have two larger pieces of 100% silk. I think at this point it's no secret that I absolutely love seeing how fabric can transform when you apply different things to it. So we tried already some acrylic mediums, we did some eyes dye, and today we're going to be using onion skins and these avocado skins and pits in order to create plant dye. So all just from what you might have left over after making a dinner. Since I'm completely new to this, I also have a book, Make Thrift and Mend, that will help me out with step-by-step -step instructions. And they do have a chapter on making plant dye and therefore dyeing your garments that you might have thrifted and you want to give them a second life. So I'm going to be basing a lot of this on their step-by-step -step instructions. So the first thing is that we actually need to weigh the fabric or the garments that we're going to be working with. All right, gotta set my scale for grams. There we go. And since I'm going to be applying mordant to all of this fabric at the same time, I'm also going to weigh it all at the same time as well. It says 69 grams. 69 grams divided by two is going to be how much? 34 and a half. Okay, and another thing that we have to do in step one, we have to make sure that the fabric or the garment is already washed according to the care label. And then the next step is actually putting this garment into a pot of water, hot water, adding um, a little bit of mild detergent. All right, I'm adding the garments and I will need to bring this to a boil and then we will simmer this for 30 minutes. So for the step number three, while all of that is coming to a boil, it says wear a dust mask, rubber gloves, and protective apron, all of which I have. My dust mask is a little bit of an overkill, but that's the one that I have at home, and I've been using that, so that will do. And it says uh, use one teaspoon of mordant for each 100 grams of fiber. So mine is 69 grams of fiber. And I actually got to do that in a jar. So it says fill a jar, add the mordant, fasten the lid, and then shake until the mordant is dissolved completely. Now, speaking of mordant, I have alum because that's what I use for fabric marbling and paper marbling, and that's what I already had on hand. And that's what usually is used for silk. But I'm just gonna go ahead and use it for both silk and cotton. Although for cotton, they usually suggest aluminum acetate. But I couldn't get my hands on it in a timely manner. You can purchase it, but alum for fabric marbling is more I would say more accessible than aluminum acetate. And we're just gonna go with it and we'll see how it turns out. So once I was done simmering fabric in the first pot where we added water, fabric, and a little bit of detergent, that fabric needed to cool down to the room temperature. And then I grabbed another pot, and this one is just for crafty stuff. This is what me and my husband, he's pretty crafty too. So this is what we use for like all the craft stuff. So I went ahead and I filled it up with enough water for fabric to move freely, and then whatever we mixed up in that jar, that went inside here as well. And of course the fabric when it already cooled down. And that needed to be brought to simmer, not necessarily to boil, but to simmer, and simmer for about 30 minutes or so. And while this was going on, I went ahead and I started my dye bath. This is the fun part, and a very simple one of that as well. So you basically take your pots, I know that one of my pots is really small, but that's all I have, and you fill it up with your dye material, onion skins and avocado skins and pits in my case. And by the way, I know that you will need quite a bit of avocados for this, so I just keep mine frozen until I have enough, because otherwise you won't be able to eat this many avocados in one sitting in order to get enough of this material to produce strong enough dye. And there are some calculations that you need to adhere to in order to get the right potency of the dye. 
But since this is not a tutorial, but just an experiment where I take you along with it, I'm going to leave the resources that I use in the info box below underneath this video. So take a look, do a little bit of additional research and just have fun with it. And after that, you fill it up with water so that way it's all submerged in water. And then you bring it to boil and then you boil it for about 30 to 60 minutes until you start seeing that rich color coming from your dye material. Now, once those pots start boiling and the water starts filling up with that rich color, that's really exciting. It's, you know, it's almost magical. It's like, wait a second, that was an onion skin and now it's turning into this rich color. That's amazing. And here I must say, by the way, that this is my first ever time trying plant-based dye, but this is not my first time working with onion skin. So for the avocado skins and pits, absolutely. My first ever time have uh, no expectations, but for onion skins, this is how we used to dye eggs every single year, every single Easter. And this is uh, quite a common tradition in a lot of European countries. So if this is how you dyed your eggs back in the day when you were a kid, give me a little thumbs up, let me know in the comments below. All right, a little update. The onion skin pot is turning dark brown, but the avocado pot um, is turning a bit more beige than I was expecting it to be. I was really hoping for a bit more of a rose color or like um, uh, dusty rose or a color like that but that's the beauty of doing things this way you never really know what exact color to expect so fingers crossed for a bit more of a rosy color but we'll have to see okay they've been simmering for quite some time let me check okay this is the one and this is the other one I think these are ready for the next step. Now I basically have to separate the dye liquid from everything else that we don't need at this stage. And you just do it this way. So once I had my dye bath already done, the next step for me was to take the fabric that was soaking up the mordant and now to submerge that into both of these pots with dye and bring that up to a boil. And I know that at this point you might think that, oh my God, there's just a lot of moving parts in this process. It might seem like it, but in reality, it's actually more time consuming than anything. And there's a lot of pots, like from one pot to another pot, to another pot, to another pot. But I was also doing two dye baths at the same time. So I definitely want to encourage you to try if you would like to. Don't be discouraged. Don't think that it's some sort of like a massive production production thing. No, it's very doable. And also in the book, they suggest that first of all, you have to bring fabric to the boil in your dye, dye bath, but also if you can leave it overnight. And that's exactly what I did because I thought, well, you know, if we're striving for the best that we can get, let's just do it. Okay. This is the next day. Let's take a look. This is the avocado pot. All right, looks looks a little muddy. <laughs> we'll see how it turns out. And this is the onion pot. Oh wow, I did not expect orange. Wow. All right, so for the next and final step, all I have to do is to rinse them out in tap water and dry them out and we'll be ready to take a look. And here, while I was rinsing these out, I must say that these rinsed out a lot faster than when I use any other dye like eyes dye or any sort of writ dye that is readily available in the shops. Usually it takes me forever to wash these out so that the water runs clear, but these were super fast. And another really interesting thing is that the dye bath itself didn't smell like anything even after leaving it overnight. I was really surprised. I thought that the onion skin bath or the, the avocado skin bath is going to smell, but no, not at all. Oh, just a side note. I know that a lot of you might be asking, well, why didn't you use turmeric as a, another plant dye in this particular video? And um, not necessarily any rhyme or reason. Maybe I will do that in a future video, but in this one, I just wanted to focus on skins onion skins and avocado skins. All right, so I have my hands full here. I have control fabric and fabric to compare to because sometimes when you see color on its own, um, you might judge it one way, but when you see that in comparison, you get a completely different perspective. All right, so let's start with the one that surprised me the most, and this one is the silk 
made with onion skins or dyed with onion skins. And the reason why I'm surprised by this is because when I would dye eggs with onion skins, it would be like maroon, dark brown, brown, maybe a little bit lighter brown, but I never ever had orange as a result. And it does look orange to me. I mean, it might look a little bit of rusty orange, but I think it's, I think it looks orange. <laughs> so this is the silk. Also silk has that really nice sheen to it just because that's the property of the fabric and any color would look really nice on silk. We have a little bit of a different story here with cotton. So you see the color is a little bit different and actually this one isn't 100% dry. So you, you see here the darker spot right over here, I can feel it on my skin is still wet and the lighter one right over here is already dry. But you can see the difference. I can even see the difference on camera. I can see how it reflects on there and you can definitely see the difference in how the color comes through on silk versus cotton. But still, now as I said, this does look orange to me. However, do you remember this tea towel from one of the recent videos where I did dye this with RIT dye? So this was orange RIT dye and then I did add uh, a glitter iron on on top. Really nice project, great for gifts. But anyway, if you compare this to that, you see there's definitely a difference. So this one is like orange orange like the standard orange that you think of and when you do compare these this is more of like a brown or rusty orange or like burnt orange I think still it's an orange all right, let's go ahead and talk about avocados next. And if you remember, I was really skeptical in that middle phase when I did look in the pot and it looked money, it looked dark, and it definitely did not look like anything that I would expect from this experiment. But once I did wash it out, take a look at this silk. Yes, it's not pink by any means, not like bright pink or a standard pink that you would think of when you say the word pink, but it does have that sort of like pinkish nude pink, maybe like dusty rose kind of color to it. I definitely think that it could be an interesting color variation, depends on how you use it. And oddly enough, I do think that these two could actually work together. So I do have a project in mind that's kind of like brewing in the back of my head. So um, maybe you'll see it soon, but I do think that this is definitely, it's an interesting color, not what I expect at all. But I also think that it depends on what you pair it with. If you do pair it with like a really, um, you know, soft pink, it might take on that sort of like pink reflection on it and look a bit more pinkish. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the cotton. And here you can see this one is like, this is not white. I promise you it's not white. It did take some dye. I can even see that in the camera right now. So this is white silk. If we put it one next to another, you see that it did take on the dye. It just, uh, I would say a lot less than the silk. You see the difference here, right? So definitely a lot less than the silk. I wonder why, but yeah, this is the cotton, this is the silk, and these were avocado skins and pits. So in one of the next videos, we're actually going to be making buttons from scratch. That's right, we're going to be making our own buttons. I'm really excited about that, so definitely subscribe, stay tuned, give this video a big thumbs up, and go ahead and watch this video. It's about the magic of eyes dying, and I think you will really enjoy it. And until next time, happy thoughtful sewing and be creative. I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!